uh, good morning, Chairperson. Sorry, I was too slow in unmuting. Uh, yes, um, I'm here with the officials, and we will be led by Mr. Sibela Mecha and uh, Alison Botta today on uh, the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, uh, generally, in terms of our program, we're supposed to be having uh, public hearings on the Transcribe Panel Code. We have not received or we did not receive any comments uh, from the public. That is why we are moving straight to deliberations. Uh, are you fine members with that approach? Yes, Chair. Thank yes, you. Chair. Good morning. Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Let's proceed over to you, um, uh, Mr. Mavid. Uh, this name, name is very difficult. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, morning, Chair. Say it's severely major, but you'll, you'll it's get used to it at some point. It, it, yeah. It is severely major. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I think so maybe I yeah, would. Yeah, I'm struggling with uh, connectivity this side and uh, you know, uh, some of the information. So we, in the last meeting, the yes. portfolio committee asked certain questions and some was relating to the statistics. So okay. we had then said we will engage with the NPA. So uh, I'm told this morning they responded. So unfortunately, I can't access my emails, but Ms. Bertha will be assisting me uh, yeah, in responding to and indicating what the NPA is saying in that respect, if I may uh, hand over to her, please. Please Thank you. proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning to you and good morning to all the members. Um, <clears throat> like my Chief Director, Mr. Sibeli Meche, has just indicated, we, following the last meeting, um, where a question was posed as to the number of cases or statistics um, of when the Transcribe Penal Code has been used, we reached out to the NPA to ask them to provide us with statistics for the previous sort of five years of prosecutions or cases which were brought in terms of the code. And like my chief director has indicated, they responded to us this morning and the director of public prosecutions for the Eastern Cape, whose advocate Barry Madolo confirmed that almost 99% of all cases in the former Transkei area are still dealt with under the Transkei Penal Code. Sections dealing with sexual offences were, however, repealed, and those are in line with national legislation. Um, and the section that prescribed minimum sentences for assault GBH were repealed, as well as the section that required an accused person to outline the nature of his defence before the commencement of a trial. The NPA confirmed that they were unable to provide statistics of investigations and prosecutions, but they did confirm that um, because the penal code was a codification of the criminal law for all offences, um, all prosecutions for common law offences are in terms of that code. So that is what the MP has, has said is the bottom line is that it's still the Transcar Penal Code is still used for 99% um, of all cases in that in the former Transcar. Okay. Um, yeah. Chair, um, would you like me to share my screen and then we can proceed to go clause by clause through the bill? Yes, uh, please do so. But in the meantime, as you are doing that, uh, members, are you satisfied with the response? I see Honorable Maseko Chaya, uh, her hand is up. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good morning, uh, everyone. No, my question is only one, Chair, clarity question. What what uh, 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 are the implications in terms of the report that we are receiving now? If the ninety nine percent of uh, cases uh, where uh, this code was used, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I, Miss um, Bota. Um. Yes. Thank you for that question. Um. If so, so 
the fact that the code is still being used um, is what we needed to try and establish from the NPA. We had asked about the number of cases that were that were prosecuted and um, um, but what we have now established is that the code is still being used. Um, it is still in force and the purpose of um, this process and this bill now is to repeal the code and to do away with the codification of the criminal law um, that the Transkei Penal Code um, augurs in the former Transkei and replace it with um, legislation which applies to the rest of South Africa and bring it in line with national legislation. I see my DDG has her hand up. Uh, DDG. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, yes, I, I, one of the practical issues when we consulted with the NPA um, on the repeal of the code was a challenge that they raised, and I think the Deputy Minister also mentioned uh, in the um, first briefing to the committee that um, they would have to, the implications, in other words, means that they would have to read charge sheets, uh, et cetera, and, and it was one of the uh, complications that they alerted us to. However, I think the intention of the bill is to bring uh, the area formerly known as Transkai into the uh, uh, legal system that operates in the rest of the country. So that intention remains and therefore all the laws ought to be the same. And the repeal of this piece of legislation should have happened uh, a long time ago. Uh, I hope that also uh, assists in answering the question. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Mr. Sibeli Mecha. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Maybe just one of the provisions that we've put in into the bill is transitional provisions that are going to deal with the uh, the investigation process, you know, uh, pending cases that will be uh, in progress. So maybe as Ms. Botha will be checking us through the bill, she will then uh, detail what the, pro the transitional provisions uh, are aimed at. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, have, um, have we exhausted uh, all the questions regarding to the responses we have received so that we can proceed to dealing with the bill? I think we have. I don't see any hands. Um, over to you, Mr. Sibele Meta. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Gota will take us through the bill. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Bota. Thank you, Jay. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to <clears throat> move along. Okay, so the <clears throat> the purpose of the bill is to repeal the Transkei and Penal Code 1983 and to extend the application of certain laws to the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei, to provide for transitional arrangements and to provide for matters connected therewith. Um, as has been discussed, there is only one definition um, and that is of the code, which is the Transkei and Penal Code, which is Act uh, number nine of 1983 of the Republic of Transkei. Uh, clause two deals with the repeal of the code, and that just quite simply provides that the code is hereby repealed by this act. Clause three, re um, Chair, I see your hand is up. It's my hand. Um, no, I see a hand is up. Um, yes, Chair. Can, can they enlarge the, the font a bit? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Is it fine now? Mamujele, is it fine now? Okay, thank you, Chair. No, it's, it's fine. Much better now. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Bota, you can proceed. Chair, it's... Uh... Honorable Nyoitrichen, um, if Ms. Boeta can click on the arrow that is on the right of the screen, that small little arrow, because that will take away that menu to make, yes, that arrow, click on it, yes, that helps. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, is everyone able to see now? Do I need to enlarge it further or? Um, we can see, thanks. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Clause three of this bill reinstates the common law in the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei. Um, <clears throat> so the common law and rules, which by virtue of the code did not apply in the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei, must, from the date of commencement of this act, also apply in the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei. And this clause is required because um, the Transkei Penal Code did away with the common law and codified criminal law in the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei. So what this clause does is reintroduces the common law, which applies to the rest of the Republic of South Africa, to now the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei. Clause 4, like my Chief Director, Advocates Billy Mitch has indicated, is the transitional provisions clause. And the purpose of this clause is to cater for in-between cases. And this, is mean, this means that it caters for instances where offences were committed under the code and before the commencement of this act. Um, simply provides that where proceedings were instituted in terms of the code and not finalised before the act commences, those proceedings must be finalised in terms of the code. Um, it also provides that where conduct would have been an offence in terms of the code which occurred before the commencement of the Act in any investigation, prosecution or legal proceedings in terms of the conduct can be finalised in terms of the code. And in order to finalise these proceedings in terms of the code, the provisions of the code will continue to apply despite its repeal by the Act. Um, and what I've done there is just sort of try to simplify what is in clause four. Um, you'll see that it's um, sort of more, more widely stated, but what I've, what I've done now is just to sort of shortly summarize what clause four, um, sub one, two, and three um, are saying. Uh, would you like me to <clears throat> go through clause four um, any further, or can I move to clause five? I will move to clause five. Um, so clause five is a savings clause and the purpose of this clause is to ensure that there is no gap or lacuna in the area formerly known as the Republic of Transkei when the code is repealed by the Act. Um, so nothing in this Act affects the exercise of any power in terms of code, right, privilege, obligation or liability inquired, accrued or incurred in terms of the code. So essentially what this clause is doing um, is ensuring that there's no gap. And it does this by firstly providing that certain things which the code provided for will be unaffected by its repeal. And secondly, by providing the powers and functions in terms of the code will be exercised by the holder of the corresponding powers and functions in terms of the corresponding law that's applicable in the rest of South Africa. And finally, it provides that when the code is repealed by this act, any reference to any law and operation in the form of Transcai to the Transcai Penal Code should be construed to be a reference to law and operation in the rest of South Africa. And the final clause is clause six, and it's the, <clears throat> the short title that the act is called the repeal of the Transcai Penal Code Act 2022. And will take effect on a date fixed by the president by proclamation in the Gazette. Ms. Botha, you will indicate if you are done or we are still continuing. I am done. That uh, So clause six is the final clause. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Members, are there any comments? Or questions? Honorable Yako? 
No, I don't have a um, a comment, um, Chair. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I'm trying to change the picture on my phone because I'm I'm using my phone to use Zoom, so it wasn't reflecting the right picture. So that's why I was not saying anything. Oh, okay. So you're covered. Yes, I'm covered. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Jela. Thank you very much, Chair. No, I think uh, my co it's only a comment, Chair, that uh, we welcome this presentation. And as, as the presenters was saying, it's long overdue. I think there's nothing that one can say more than that, that uh, we appreciate that they've come to this point. Uh, and and thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, any further comments? Are we all happy with the bill as as presented? Yes, Chair. For me, for myself. Uh, Honorable Neil Yes, Chair. Um, I was saying yes, Chair. I'm, I am happy with the bill as presented. Thank you very much. Uh, members, can we now um, uh, move towards uh, maybe today or the next available time? The committee secretary will indicate where we can deal with the committee report. Will that be in order? Yes, yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Oh, yeah, Chair, okay. come back. Yes, Chair. Okay. Uh, committee secretary. Ms. Uh, Mr. Bonan. Yes, I think the next meeting would be. Let me just let me just confirm. No, I think um, next week on Friday we have a meeting. We have a meeting. Yeah. Uh, okay. So next week Friday, members, we would be adopting the bill and the report. Um. Thank you very much for, for, for the discussions and thank you to the department for, for the good work done. Um, at least we are now ready to, to finally put this bill to bed and the next available time, uh, uh, which will be on Friday, next week we will um, adopt the report and then we will debate the bill in the house um it's one of those bills that uh, we had to quickly uh, dispense with because we've got a lot of legislation this year that we must uh, process thank you very much uh, can i just have uh, members of the committee uh, remaining behind for two minutes thank you chair thank you very much thank you very much thank you chair thank you Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, okay. No, uh, members, it is just the, the issue that. Uh, sure. we, hello? Can I just uh, remove? I think there's still uh, uh, the YouTube streaming is still live. Can, okay. can you just give us a minute to remove uh, people? Okay.